Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video is going to be on the criticism that was given to Stephen King for a couple of tweets when it comes to talking about diversity in the arts. Now, I originally hadn't heard about this until I watched a radio show that I watch and listen to um, here and there, and it's called The Breakfast Club. For any of you guys that may not be aware of what it is for what it is, if you've seen the famous Birdman interview where he's going, are y'all finished, are y'all done, and he's pressing one of the radio hosts, this is that same radio show. And there's a segment called Donkey of the Day. And usually the segment is real funny. He gives credit to people for making very uh, stupid decisions and just giving them credit for what they deserve as far as the things that they have done, what they have caused. And this is one of the things that popped up where he's giving Stephen King criticism and giving him Donkey of the Day for something he said. So let's go ahead and we'll listen to it together. I will have to unplug my mic for this but I'll replug it in once the video is done. So let's go ahead and take a look at it together and see what it says about Stephen King. It's about Stephen King, okay? He caught the wrath of social media yesterday when he tweeted out, I would never consider diversity in matters of art, only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. Now, let me tell you the primary reason I think this is stupid and why Stephen King should get the credit he deserves for being stupid. It's because art is a reflection of life, okay? Art is a reflection of society. Art is a reflection of people's experiences, a reflection of people's views, a reflection of people's ideas. So someone who is as creative as Stephen King should understand why diversity is so important. Life, the society we live in, is very diverse, okay? You have different races, different genders, different sexualities. I can understand a 72-year-old white man not grasping that concept because he doesn't have to. Right? White men are probably the only people on this planet who can afford to live in a box, especially here in America, because this system was designed by them for them. So in Stephen King's mind, sure, he's not thinking about diversity when he's creating his art because he's coming from an old white man's perspective. All right. He knows his world and he sticks to it. Not to mention he's doing horror and supernatural fiction. So who's got time to think about diversity? But it's also a contradiction because uh, Stephen King wrote Carrie, right? He, mm hmm. And, you know, uh, I remember him writing in his book one time that Carrie was about feminism, right? And how women find their own channel of powers and what men fear about women and women's sexuality. So if you can be that thoughtful about a character you write, then you absolutely, Stephen, have considered diversity when it comes to your art. So what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Author Roxanne Gay hit it on the head when she said, quality is everywhere, but most industries only believe in quality from one demographic. She said that in response to Stephen King's tweet, and I totally agree. But I hate when we beat around the bush. Stephen King only believes in quality from white folks, okay? They don't think diversity and quality go hand in hand when it comes to people of color because they just don't see the worth in anything that's not white. It is what it is. And sadly, Stephen King's mindset reflects the mindset of a lot of executives in Hollywood. Now, after the backlash, or should we say blacklash, uh, Stephen King tweeted, the most important thing we can do as artists and creative people is make sure everyone has the same fair shot regardless of sex, color, or orientation. Right now, such people are badly underrepresented and not only in the arts. Clean up on aisle seven! Okay, Stephen King, you should have led with that tweet. In fact, that should have been your only tweet about the situation, okay? After tweeting what you tweeted previously about not considering diversity in your art, that second tweet, the cleanup tweet, is more supernatural fiction than anything you've ever written. Please let Kathy Griffin give Stephen King the biggest hee-haw. Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee-haw. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Right off the bat, that sounds like a huge reach because I've read the full tweet that Stephen King said and it was broken into two, two different parts. So there's a much longer first part and then the part that he's covering is the second part. So before we get into that, let's look at the comments because usually for something that's kind of controversial, I'll look at the comments and see what people say. And it's funny because as much as he thinks he's right, everybody in the comments seems to be agreeing with Stephen King. So let's take a look. Let's look at a few of them. So the very first one says, he means he doesn't care if you're white or black. He just wants the best people for the job. The irony of this is Charlemagne is quoted saying, I don't like diversity in movies just for the sake of being diverse. It's literally what Stephen King is saying. Seems like everyone agrees this is the worst donkey of the day. This reaction was more racist than what Stephen King said. And I don't even think that what he said was racist. Uh, we'll cover that in a minute. Uh, this donkey of the day ain't it. Y'all are reaching. This sounds like a reach. Stephen King didn't deserve this. 
I've never seen something taken so out of context, and it just goes on and on and on. Uh, I mean, you can even just go down to the comments going back, you know, days, 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 so, I mean, all five days from when it was first posted, and, um, let me see, uh, Charlemagne gives me intense urges to punch his face. Ah, Lord, take this anger out of me. Uh, Stephen King is absolutely right. I mean, it's more so there's... Everybody in the comments seems to be going against what Charlemagne said. And the reason is, we're going to cover it for... This is an article from ABC News. And it's thousands of Twitter replies challenge Stephen King's tweet on diversity in art. The famed author said that he would never consider diversity in matters of art. Now, that is the second part of his tweet. That is not the whole tweet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that because a lot of people are completely taking it out of context. So, author Stephen King got ratioed on Twitter by some big names who adamantly rejected his opinion about diversity in the arts. King first tweeted out on Tuesday that as an author, he is allowed to put forward contenders in three categories for the Academy Awards and went on to comment on di the diversity issue. So. What you're seeing on the screen right now, so the two, I'm just putting it right in the center of the screen, the two that you see right now, this is one whole thought process, and it was unfortunately split between two different tweets. So, as a writer, I am allowed to nominate in just three categories, Best Picture, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Original Screenplay. For me, the diversity issue, as it applies to individual actors and directors anyway, did not come up. So let's take that for exactly what it is. He is only allowed in three different categories. And for there, the diversity issue, as it applies to individual people and directors, did not come up. With that said, I would never consider diversity in matters of art, only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. So what he's saying is, I do not judge based upon the color of their skin, race, or gender, I am judging upon the matters of the art and the quality for which they are either performing the art or creating the art themselves. I don't understand what's wrong with that. And he's, um, I mean, there's other tweets that he did too, but let's, let's see what other people said first because he does kind of reiterate and uh, explain a little bit deeper. But uh, for example, the Rage author immediately drew the ire from an array of celebrities, including award-winning filmmaker Ava DuVernay. And she said, when you wake up, meditate, stretch, and reach for your phone to check on the world and see a tweet from someone you admire that is so backward and ignorant, you want to go back to bed. Now, what's funny about this is she's saying that what he's saying is apparently so backwards thinking, maybe even racist, because he's saying that being diverse is not artful. She's the one that made A Wrinkle in Time. And didn't Brie Larson say that that movie is not for white people? I would consider that more racist than what Stephen King said. So, um, let's keep going. So, followed by famed author Roxane Gay, who questioned why diversity and quality can't be synonymous. As a fan, this is painful to read from you. It implies that diversity and quality cannot be synonymous. There are, no, there are not separate things. Um, quality is everywhere, but most industries only believe in quality from one demographic. And now here you are. So with this, it's, he's not saying that you can't be diverse and have it be artistic. What he's saying is when in the matters of art, and he didn't talk about when it comes to getting into the industry, which he actually is going to kind of speak upon that in a follow-up tweet. He's not saying when it comes to getting in, how that plays into, because, you know, when it comes to any kind of business at all. There's obviously going to be roadblocks. There's obviously going to be a bias towards one thing or the other. And obviously, some people were not able to be able to be part of something much sooner because they were not seen as fit for the job, right? So, but the thing is, he's talking about when it comes to the voting, when it comes to the nominations, when it comes to giving people the credit that they deserve for the art that they've made, he's not basing that on their color, race, or religion, or anything. He's basing it upon their performance to be able to do that job, and therefore, diversity should not be an issue. It's only about them being able to perform the job itself. And 
everybody else is taking, they're taking the second part as if that's the whole main thought. And he's even speaking about how he can't even be diverse when it comes to his voting. He has three categories, and within those categories, he is looking at just the quality for which he can actually nominate for. And he's not looking at the fact that it was a man or a woman that made it, if they were black, white, or anything in between. He doesn't even care about any of those details, those little things that should not matter. He's looking at, was this good? Was this bad? Okay, I'm voting for this. That's it. And everybody is enraged because they're taking it as being diverse is not art, when that's not what he's speaking upon at all. So, you know, keep going. Um, uh, Disney star uh, Fernandez, or Danny Fernandez, challenged King's tweet with her own response about a lack of diversity amongst voters. Is it possible that if the majority of voters look a certain way, that they are going to resonate more with stories and actors and films that reflect them? They are of quality to them, and while we have some outliers, the majority of nominees throughout history remain the same. And so with this, it's like voting for like the president, right? A lot of people were, when it came to Barack Obama, and I don't even, I don't even remember who he was running against, it was black and white. It wasn't even for a lot of people, and especially a lot of people that I talk to, because they don't really understand politics very well. But, and I'm, I'm right down the middle. I don't believe in being half wrong all the time about being a left or a right. What Stephen King is trying to say is don't vote because, hey, I'm gonna vote for that guy, for Barack Obama, because he's black. I'm gonna vote for this person because they're white. Vote for the quality for which the person is based on their character and by who they're able, or what they're able to do with their character. Not because of what you see on the outside, but what you actually see on the inside. So, um, Laura Lipman says, with all due respect, I'm afraid that a mediocrity could work only if the game weren't rigged. And so, he's gonna kinda clean that one up a little bit too. Uh, and we have stories founder and author Frederick Joseph, who weighed in and said, the interesting thing is that diversity generally leads to more interesting, relatable, and higher quality art. And yeah, it can. Not always does it, but it can. And so taking on, for example, if you have a story that is, like with Hollywood, what they're doing is they're taking movies that are already in existence and gender swapping and race swapping. Because you're now being diverse with the story that's already set in stone, that has a fan base, that has a following and everything, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be of a higher quality work. The fan base is not going to generally, if you've seen the movies for 2019 that have all flopped, that were SJW'd and agenda-based, they flopped because the, the audience says, this is what we like. This is how the story was supposed to be told and iterated to us. And now you're changing it. You're making the men women. You're making the race color. And you're making sure that everybody is very full aware because we want diversity, not because it actually fits the narrative to the story at hand. That's like, for example, if you were to take Black Panther and race swap them, would it still work? No, because it doesn't fit the narrative for which the movie is supposed to be told. So, um, you know, a couple more of these and I'll get off. Even more users replied with gifts, including a hypocrisy meter, people cringing or appearing to be completely shocked, while some kept their replies short and simple. And Ashley C. Ford, I have no idea who that is. Uh, what if I told you you could do both? You can do both, but he's not talking about keeping them separate. He's talking about just the quality of the work based upon the character of the person. So, and then uh, while commenters agree with King were sparse, some users did find ways to side with the famed author. I don't often agree with Stephen King, but on this point, he's 100% correct. Imposing diversity tests and art um, is absurd. Art is either good or bad in accordance with the standards of the art form and unrelated to the skin color or gender of its creator. That's the whole point he's trying to make. So, and here's what Stephen King followed up with. So, the most important thing we can do as artists and creative people is make sure everyone has the same fair shot, regardless of sex, color, or orientation. Right now, such people are badly underrepresented, and not only for the arts, you can't win awards if you're shut out of the game. That's the whole thing. He was not saying that you can't be diverse or give everyone a fair shot. So, you know, if you have, you know, every group of people and you are able to give one person from each one a shot at getting this particular role, great. But when it comes to the whole thing started with, let's go back to the very top, what he's talking about. As a writer, I'm allowed to nominate in just three categories. Best Picture, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Original Screenplay. For me, the diversity issue, as it applies to individual actors and directors anyway, did not come up. And then with that, 
I would never consider diversity in matters of art, only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. He's talking about, here, I am only allowed to nominate in just three categories. When it comes to voting, especially when it comes to like the Oscars, when it comes to the art of the whole matter, when it comes to the movie, the TV show, the song, whatever it is, when it comes to the idea for what it is, you are supposed to only just look at the content of the person, not the race, not the gender, not the religion or anything. Because if you have, for example, two people, they're black and white, right? And you have, they both do the exact same thing, depending on the ability for which they can actually create the character or to do the performance needed, you would pick the best person to do it. Now, if you have like a group of people like, hey, we need a a uh, black person to fill this role because this is what the character entails from which the story is. And now all of a sudden white people are going, so why can't I fill that role? Well, we need someone that's black to do this one. Okay? You're looking for the quality of the person to be able to fill that role. Just like you're not going to have a movie about girls and fill it in with guys. You know, especially if what you're looking for are girls. You don't want guys auditioning to line up to play that role. You're looking just for girls. And so, also, putting diversity into the idea of being nominated is undermining the work that the people that actually were nominated have done. You're taking away credit from them because, for example, I do not do any kind of acting at all. But let's say I decided to join in to be an actor, and I've only done some minor roles. They are not worthy of any kind of awards or anything. They are. Maybe it's like, hey, he's starting to be recognized because he's doing a lot of these roles. He's starting to create some buzz for his name, whatever. And I get put into a category full of everybody else that has done really, really well, and I don't deserve it. And they're throwing it in because, hey, um, we have every other race except a white guy. Let's just throw a white guy in there. Just so that way it looks like we're being diverse. I then don't deserve to be there because I have not been able to live up to the expectations to be able to be nominated for that award, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. And so to be diverse for the sake of just having a bunch of different people in there, one oversaturates the voting because it's there's so many different choices. You want to narrow it down to the people that actually did deserve it. Now, when it comes to, again, getting into the industry, it's a whole other topic. And that's where like you see the cliche of people saying, oh, well, I am a you know waitress waiting tables. I'm waiting for my big break or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And there's people that aren't able to ever make it. It's a tough business. And I'm not saying that you know people shouldn't be, or people should be uh, not given the chance to perform and to be able to show their worth. I completely agree that people should be given that same chance and the same opportunity. However, if you're creating diversity just to be able to get people off your back, well, why don't you have more of this, more of that, more of this, more of that? What you're doing is you're pandering and you're not getting anywhere with it. You're undermining the talent that already has been put forth and you're also giving false hope to those that were nominated. Again, in my instance, they said, hey, we need a white guy, just throw a white guy in there. Now I'm thinking, oh wow, what I'm doing is so good. You know, Maybe I can get a next big break. And then I go to somebody else saying, hey, I can feel, oh, well, you've only done this TV. Well, I was nominated. Well, they nominated you strictly because you, they needed diversity. That you weren't nominated because you actually did good. And it would give me a false sense of reality of me actually deserving that spot. And so that's why it's ridiculous that people are backlashing Stephen King for this. And it should be only upon the merit for the person and the character that, of that person, not on the skin color, the race, or the gender. The idea is, when it comes to the voting, like he said, as a writer, I'm allowed to nominate in just three categories. Best picture, best adapted screenplay, best original screenplay. For me, the diversity issue, as it applies to individual actors, and directors anyway, did not come up. So the diversity for which he's not voting upon their skin color, only upon the character of the person. And it's very important to understand that, especially today, because guess what today is? Let's hear it from the man himself. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.